Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Now that I've got the production of Uninspected Mineral happening very quickly and automatically with Astral Sorcery, it's time to figure out this whole chain here to make sure everything on this side runs smoothly. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out all the stuff, um, all the raw materials that I need to keep this stuff going. There's many, many things. For example, this crushing gear and the mineral sizer has durability, so I'm going to need to manufacture and replace these. And then all these different things take test tubes and various other things, fluoride bearing compound, sodium chloride compound, more test tubes over here, and, and uh, some of those are a little bit difficult to make too, like the sulfur bearing compound, or maybe it's the fluoride bearing compound, well one of the, uh, no it's the sulfur, the sulfur bearing compound is best made from the extractor by putting gunpowder in here. So there's lots and lots of stages, but at the very beginning of all the stages we have, what are the basic raw ingredients that I need to put into the system to make sure everything stays stocked? So I'm going to figure that out, and I'm going to put a drawer down to store every single one of them. So I was having a look at the crafters that are available to me, the auto crafters, and the one I'm most experienced with, with is the RF Tools Crafter. But unfortunately, not surprisingly, that's been made a lot more expensive. The most expensive part of it is definitely the ME crafting terminal, which takes all sorts of different things and, uh, yeah. <laughs> it might be technically possible, but it's really hard. So I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try these mechanical crafters from Extra Utilities 2. I believe they can only craft one item though, so I'm going to have to make a bunch of them. The RF Tools crafters can craft multiple items. I believe the tier 3 can craft 8 different items. Uh, but yeah, let's try these. 6 resonating redstone crystals, some droppers, some crafting tables, relatively cheap, except for the resonating redstone crystal. Now let's just see how this thing works. Doesn't look like it takes power from what I can tell. So let's just give it a simple recipe. Let's say... Um... Let's say you can make compressed cobblestone. So if I put this in here, it should make it. Yeah. All right, that's reasonably fast. It doesn't need to be super fast by any means. Always on speed upgrades. Um, yeah, it looks like there's really nothing else to do with it. So the only challenge this poses is that the ingredients that it uses to craft and the output are the same inventory space. Which means if we go to if we just hook a transfer node directly onto the outside of this thing, it's going to indiscriminately pull out whatever, and we want it to only pull out one particular thing, the crafting output. So I'm going to have to make some item filter stuff for extra utilities. That shouldn't be a big problem, but just a little extra thing. Oh, whoa! Look at that. Oh, that's neat. It shows you a ghostly image of what it's going to craft. That's actually super helpful. Right, so what I'm thinking is, because I'm going to have to have so many crafters, one for every single item I want to craft, and I'm also going to have to filter them, and there's going to be quite a few pipes running around. This is already, like, kind of messy. I mean, I'd say this area is pretty well full at this point. So rather than handling the item crafting up here, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this here. These are some of the raw ingredients I'm going to need to craft what I need, incomplete at the moment. Uh, but I think I'm going to extract from all of these places at the bottom and then I think I'm just going to pipe them all down underground and I think I'm going to do the crafting underground and then send the outputs back up. I think that'll probably be easier. And it should be relatively straightforward to hook the item outputs up to the bottom of everything because I've hooked stuff up to the sides of all this stuff and I want to leave the tops of all of them open because eventually I'm going to switch over to RF powering these which means I'm going to need a spot free on the top for a power connector. So the only reliable and clean way of hooking these things up to items is through the bottom. And if the crafting and all that stuff is already done underground right below it, then it should be super easy to just come right up and hook up to the bottom. So I'm going to carve out a bit of a basement and get to work. All right, I've got a little hole here. Hopefully this will be enough room to do all my work in. So I want to test, uh, before I get into this 
completely. I want to test how the filtering works in Extra Utilities 2, because I only have experience with Extra Utilities 1. And I noticed it looks a little bit different. So there are item filters, but there's also transfer filters. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know if you have to use a transfer filter and put an item filter in the transfer filter. I don't really know, so let's let's find out. So let's just put a couple chests here. Um, unlimited single item, single stack. Okay, so yeah, I think you do need that. I think there's probably nowhere to put the filter, just... No. No, there is. So a transfer node itself can have a filter. Where does this go? Does this just... I don't understand what that's supposed to hook up to. Oh, okay. I think I get it. Um, the difference and the purpose of this is a little bit subtle. But it looks like what it does is it doesn't connect to anything on its own unless there's pipes on each side. And so I think what it does is it filters the stuff going in that direction. So, for example, let's say you have a bunch of things coming from this pipe. Let's say it's coming from that direction. You have multiple items. It's coming through this one pipe, and then you want to split off different items. Let's say you want, like, dirt to go up and, I don't know, cobblestone to keep going to the right. So you want to split the items and make sure only certain things can go in certain areas. I think how it's meant to be used is... Eh, there we go. So if you put a pipe on the other side, it passes through like that. Yeah, so if you want cobblestone to go to the right, then you'd set a filter here for cobblestone and then a filter here for dirt. So I think that's the purpose of of the transfer filter, which is different from just using an item filter on a transfer node, because if you put an item filter in a transfer node, it'll change what the transfer node actually picks out of the chest. So it actually won't even pick up things that aren't in the filter. If you just put the thing you want in the transfer filter here, like let's say you only wanted to transport cobblestone through this thing, and you didn't have a filter here, then this thing could conceivably get anything else. It could get glass, for example, and this thing will fill up with glass and try to transfer it through, but this thing will only take cobblestone and it won't transfer through, and then, well, the system would just pretty much shut down, because these the items that would be here, the glass, would have nowhere to go. Okay. Well, the one I want to use is just simply the transfer node with the, the basic filter on it. All right, so I've got an interesting problem to solve now. So I'm using the iron as kind of my my uh, test craft. The iron's gonna be used to make that crushing gear thing used in the mineral sizer. And the problem I wanna solve is how do I make this thing not just eat up every single bit of iron that you put into it? Because a crushing gear has what, like 500 durability? It'll crush 500 different pieces? I don't need to make, you know, if I put in 100 iron, I don't want it to make 25 crushing gears. That's just excessive. It only needs to make one when it needs it. I don't need a huge stockpile. So to solve that, I'm going to try using an inventory checker, which I've never used before, but um, it's another RF tools thing, just like the block checker thing that uh, detected when the gravel had turned into the uninspected mineral. And it emits a redstone signal, just like that. This emits a redstone signal, depending on inventory stuff. So. Let's put the recipe for the gear in. Is it... I don't remember what it was. Oh. That's kind of close. So, five pieces of iron, and it will make one. One, two, three, four, five. And it's crafted. Okay, gonna save the rest of my iron for now. So one thing that we definitely do have to do is, of course, extract it. So we extract it. Uh, I'm gonna have to use an item filter, so put a filter on this. We only want it to extract the crushing gear. So 
So now if you put this in here, it'll extract it. But if you put like cobblestone in here, it won't. Okay, that's great. But now what I think I want to do is let's have this go to a chest. So it'll transfer the gear to the chest. Now let's try out the inventory checker. Um, don't want this to get too cramped. I guess I'll put it here. That needs to be flipped around. All right, let's see how this thing works. So it's gonna look in slot zero, which is this one. If in slot zero, there's one, I'm not sure what that's for. Let's put down some redstone and see if this is doing what I think it is. Yeah, so it is active. If in slot zero there is one item, this is, oh, this is probably for a, a filter, if you wanted it. Um, I shouldn't need that though. So if I move this to the next slot, yeah, it turns off. So it's just seeing whether there is a item, a single item, in the first slot of the chest. Good. So when there is an item, that means I want to turn off the mechanical crafter, because this means we have a crushing gear. If there is a crushing gear, I don't want to produce any more. Huh. I just realized a slight problem with this. The lag inherent in the system might make it so that I end up with maybe a couple crushing gears before this thing is able to output a signal. So... Okay. Good, this is doing something I wasn't expecting, but is actually helpful. It's not emitting a signal when there is only exactly one in the slot, it's emitting a signal when there is one or more. One, two, three... Yeah, okay, good. So even if we end up with a couple crushing gears, it's fine. It's not going to turn the signal off. Good. So this thing right now is set to always on. We want to change that. We want this to turn off when there's a redstone signal. So redstone off, I believe, should do it. Mm, that might give me some problems. Because I've got to get it. That's definitely going to give me some problems. Because I got to get some stuff transferred out of here, and now the redstone's just right here. Um. Well, let's just see if this works. Yeah. All right. Let's just see if this works. Let me get some more iron. Get a little bit more. All right. So I'm going to be a little bit daring here. Let's shove a whole stack of iron. So this should start to get them. But it shouldn't craft anything when it reaches five. That did? Okay. Well, something's wrong. Oh, they don't stack. Hmm. I don't think that'll pose a problem. Why does it not think it's getting a signal? Does this need to be raised up one? Maybe it does. Let's try raising that up. Alright, let's try again. Should not craft. Okay, that was the problem. The signal has to be at the top of the block, not the bottom. Now, what happens when I take all these gears out? Should craft one? Mm. Okay, so this does mean what I think it means. This means it needs to receive a redstone signal to craft. The reason it wasn't crafting is because it still doesn't think it's getting a redstone signal. What? I don't get it. Okay, I think the trick is, for some reason, you have to put the redstone on top of the block. I think this will work. So it is sending a signal. 
It has enough in there to craft and it's not crafting it, so if I pull this out, it should shortly craft it and show up in here. Okay. Well, I made enough, enough crushing gears for five years. And I don't know if this is going to cause any issues. I don't know if applying a redstone signal to a drawer does anything. I just don't know. But, uh, let me just shove the rest of it in there. Oh. Yeah, it looks like the redstone signal is disabling it. Because none of that iron is coming out of there. Okay, I just moved the whole contraption a little bit forward so that the redstone no longer touches the drawer and all seems to be well. Alright. I'm going to run out of space pretty quickly, aren't I? I think I might need to in bigify this place. There we go. Just went ahead and spread them out. Alright, let me get to work on some more of these. Now there's something else I've got to test. The glass is going to go to make two different things, so I need to split the glass evenly. And the question is, if I have a pipe that is uh, has two destinations at equal length, will it randomly pick between the two and therefore distribute it pretty much evenly? I know it will try to go to the nearest place first, so if they're not of equal lengths, it definitely will just go to the first place. But if they are of equal lengths, what will happen? Let's see. Oh. It just, all of it was in the transfer node. Here we go. Let's try it again. Three. Uh. not looking good. It seems to have quite a preference for the other chest. Huh. Well, oh. Okay, maybe it's just bad luck. Okay, yeah, it was just luck. So it's coming in batches of like three. Yeah, it will evenly distribute. Okay, good. Okay, I think I've got the basic crafting chain set up for all the glass products. As ugly as it is. So the glass gets evenly distributed between the test tubes and bottles. And then from there, uh, the test tube is just all we need for that. So it just goes into a chest, which then has another inventory checker, which disables the crafting if there is a single test tube in here. So we put one in here. You can see it flips on. Disables it. Take it out. Oh, I just all tapped out of the game. Take it out, and it turns off. And this one's a couple stage process. So it comes in as glass, gets turned into a bottle, and then goes to another crafter and gets turned into these chemical flasks. Then goes to a chest and has an inventory checker, which once again, when it has um, eight of these, which is the normal crafting amount, one flask, or one, uh, one bottle becomes eight flasks. If that's in there, disables the crafting. I had to do this ugly structure here because I wanted to make sure that each of these had separate signals and if I connected them in the center then they would link up and they'd both be activated if any one of these activated. So let's test how this works. I made a bunch more glass. There we go. Got a couple stacks in there. Let's connect this. Okay. Now quite shortly they should both activate as it crafts what it needs to craft. There we go. That one's good. This one's a couple stages, so it might take a bit longer. There we go. And now this should no longer be crafting. Yep, so you can see it built up a little buffer of glass bottles before it was triggered off, but that's fine. Not a big deal. All right, yeah, so that's working great. The only problem I see that probably isn't gonna be a very big issue, but, um, you know, when I decide to turn off the crafting that doesn't stop this from transferring glass in. And because this, it just has one inventory, these auto crafters, one whole inventory for both the glass and for the output. Theoretically, it would be possible to put so much glass in this thing that these things fill up completely with glass and have no room to actually make the test tube or whatever else they make. So ideally I would fix that and make sure that these only keep like one stack in each of them. Um, I might 
I might be able to do that with the transfer filters. Maybe, maybe I can use the transfer filters without actually putting a filter in them and only use the part that allows you to limit how much goes into each one. Oh my god, what buttons am I pressing? I just saved a screenshot. Okay, sure. <laughs> Let me see if I can do that. Um, the only thing is I don't think it's going to work with how I have this set up. Because I think I need a straight pass-through. So I think if I... I don't think I can really like... Man, you know, maybe that'll work. That might actually work. Let's hope. Let's see. I'm gonna just hope that that works. Okay, so let's just to test this, let's set it so that only a single item will be in each. Let's take all the glass out. Okay. One. Good. Oh. Oh, there we go. I think it took it a while, just, um, uh, yeah, it seems to be random whether it goes left or right. So it doesn't necessarily evenly distribute it. It doesn't, like, flip-flop between the two. I think it just randomly picks. So sometimes you have to wait a while for it to, uh, for the average to kind of even out. Um, but yeah, that's actually doing exactly what I wanted it to do. You don't have to filter the item types or anything like that per se, you can just directly connect it like that and just set it to whatever you want. Okay, so yeah, that totally solves that problem. Um, we don't want this on single item of course though, so let's set this to single stack. That guarantees that these auto crafters will not just fill up with glass. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so these are all done. I just need to extract from the chests and output them to where they need to go. But let's deal with some of the other things. So now we've got the salt to turn into the sodium whatever compound. And then the gunpowder to turn into the other compound. All right, I've got a line hooked all the way up to the extractor. That's where the gunpowder is going to need to go. It goes kind of underneath, trying to keep it from intersecting with the others. So let's see if this works. Might take a little bit of time because of how long it is. But let's go see. It's gone in. Let's wait patiently. It is searching the network. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and of course, my inadequate EU power system is showing itself once again. It's alright though, I don't think I need to produce this stuff very fast. Each one produces one sulfur dust and... Um, I believe it was three... Yeah, three sulfur dusts and a chemical flask will produce a 32 sulfur-bearing compound. So this thing really does not need to be too fast. Now... I can't remember if I've tested this. If I extract from it, will it only extract the sulfur dust? It's not going to extract the gunpowder, right? So I don't need to set up a filter. No. Okay, great. Now, my flasks that I need to craft it into are down below, so I'm going to have to send the product from the extractor back down and then craft it into what I need it to be, and then send it up. Alright, got it set up now. So the gunpowder goes all the way up to it. Let me set it to day. Uh, gunpowder goes all the way up to it, to the extractor. And then sulfur comes down uh, here goes into this crafter. This crafter takes in both the sulfur and the chemical flask. And I've limited it so that it only will hold a stack of each. And then I extract only the sulfur bearing compound out of it into this chest and then another inventory checker. So when there's, uh, it should be more than one. Let's say when there's 32. So it's gonna allow it to craft when there's Less than 32. Once this fills up to 32, it should. There we go. Stops it from crafting. Alright, cool. 
So we have crushing gear, test tubes, um, I forgot whether we use the chemical flasks directly or not, but if we do use them directly, well, we can get them still. And even if we don't, it's at least a product that we need to make the sulfur bearing compound. So we got all that. Um, I believe there's two more compounds to make though. Okay, I had to reroute this redstone here. This redstone was going up here. And by having the redstone on top of this block right here, it was actually triggering the transfer node. It looks like the transfer nodes can be disabled with redstone, unfortunately. So this one was, this redstone was active, which was disabling this transfer node, which was preventing this whole thing from doing its thing. And yeah, no, nothing was flowing on this side. I've got another similar setup for the sodium chloride compound. That requires the salt, which I'm running from all the way over there into this crafter. And then the flasks are coming from this chest. It just goes down, runs under the ground, and comes up here. I wanted to kind of expose and move this transfer pipe for the flasks, because I'm also going to need the flasks for the other compound. And another inventory checker to turn off the crafting for the sodium chloride compound. Whew, this is getting big, huh? All right, I think I've got it set up for the cracked coal compound. That should trigger off. There we go. Stop producing it. So, yep, pretty much the same as the other one. Connected the flasks up to the same line. And then I get the coal from all the way over here, the squiggly line. I filled up the last empty drawer down here with coal. Same inventory checker and all that stuff. All right, um, I think that's all of the compounds except for one. There's one that looks a little bit special. Is it this one? Fluorite? Yeah, so there's. it looks like there's two ways to make the fluoride bearing compound. One way is the way we did before, which is to put granite inside of the mineral sizer with a crushing gear, and then it just straight up produces the compound. However, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to make another mineral sizer. I don't want to have to deal with trying to find diorite and all that. So rather than that, I think a better way to do it might be to do the other recipe, this one. So chemical flask plus three fluorite shards will produce eight fluorite bearing compound. And the fluorite shards are a possible result from halide mineral in the mineral analyzer. So in other words, it should be a byproduct of all of the, uh, the shards and stuff that we get. So I think I'm just going to process the stuff for a while and then um, and then once I get some of those, some of those um, shards that I need, I forgot the name of the shards already. Well, whatever they are. Once I get some of those shards out of Mineral Analyzer, then I can use the item to set up a filter and redirect the flow of just those shards um, down below to be processed into the compound. And then everything else will, of course, go into the chemical extractor. But for that, I need to run everything for a while. So let's... Good stuff running, huh? Let me hook some of the stuff up down below to up here, and some of the stuff up here to other things up here as well, like mineral sizer to the mineral analyzer, for example. Hmm. Okay, so I've been watching this thing work for a little bit, and I've seen multiple halide materials or halide minerals move through here, which are the things that are supposed to give you the fluoride shards. Halide mineral. Um, but none of them have actually produced a fluoride shard. They seem to produce the bolite shards. So maybe there's just like a really rare chance of getting a fluoride shard or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, it doesn't look like that's really going to be a viable way of, of getting the fluoride bearing compound. So I think I am going to have to make another mineral sizer and find some way of making diorite or just collect it in mass and distribute it to the mineral sizer and then use that to make the fluoride bearing compound. All right, I've got drawers for the granite and the uninspected mineral. And I also made another mineral sizer. So this one's for the granite to make the fluoride bearing compound stuff. And this one's for the uninspected mineral. And I just realized I was thinking I would have to make a whole processing thing for the fluoride bearing compound, but I forgot that when you make it this way, uh, compound, 
Yeah, when you make it this way, it actually just straight up makes the fluoride bearing compound directly from the granite, even though you don't give it any glass or anything. So that actually greatly simplifies things. Yeah, nice. Okay, I think I've got everything I need. Now I just need to route it all. So let me route everything from down below to up here. Okay, I think I got everything hooked up. Boy, does it not look pretty. I'm, I'm gonna fix the Swiss cheese holes in the floor just once I'm sure, completely sure that this thing's actually working, but I'm pretty sure it does. Try to separate out all the lines. And it gets even worse down below. Oh yeah. Look at this. Anyway, let's see if it actually works. So this thing should be getting filled up with granite. Also, these things are going to run out of power super fast. They just blow through this energized fuel blend. Yep, it's getting filled up with granite, producing the things it needs to produce, which goes over here, provides this with a fluoride bearing compound. Allows it to produce hydrofluoric acid. Yep, so that's getting filled up. This thing's getting filled up with uninspected mineral, and it is outputting it to the mineral analyzer. Yep, it's got plenty to analyze. Check the fluids. Sulfuric, good. Hydrochloric, good. Hydrofluoric, pretty good. Starting to build up. That transports stuff over here to be processed. This is doing good. A little bit low on syngas, but I'm sure that'll build up. Check the other lab ovens. This thing's full of sodium chloride. Yeah, a little bit low on the on whatever that was, the fluorite stuff, hydrofluoric or something. Uh, hmm. This thing should have the cracked coal compound. Something might be wrong with that one. That's hooked up to this line. It could just be slow, because the lines are quite long. That's hooked up to here, which has the cracked coal compound, yes. Um, I think it's probably just very, very, very slowly searching through. You can see every time these numbers change, that's it. That's it checking one more block along the uh, the line. So it's probably just taking its sweet time, because it is after all connected... Oh, my jetpack's out of fuel. It is after all connected to this line, so it actually has to check the entire network all the way here. But yeah, there's absolutely no reason that won't go in. So we can just speed that up. I'll just take half of that. Oh. Wait. Hmm, it's not the cracked coal compound that goes in here, is it? It's the carbon compound, isn't it? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So I need to set up another crafter in this chain. Okay, easy enough. Okay, that should be all good now. Got to set up. Yeah. All right. So aside from everything probably being dead now, because it's probably out of power, certainly the lab ovens are. Well, some of them. I can't wait to switch over to RF, but they are indeed working. This thing is doing its thing. Oh no, it's out of power too, of course. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure everything is working. It looks like it. Everything seems pretty filled up. Uh, you know, there's a couple things I can't test until they break, like when when the gears break, is that going to replace properly? It almost certainly will. I don't see how it couldn't, but can't test that for a while until they break. Or I guess I could take them out, but eh. How exciting. We'll see if that ends up with a new one soon. So, before I end the episode... This has taken way more work than I thought it would. This is just... Oh, man. When you're working with relatively basic tools, this stuff is tough. Anyway, let's see what it takes to make the convert everything over to RF thing. The induction heating interface, right? 
So the hard part was the heating element, which takes nichrome, which takes nickel, iron, easy, chromium. Chromium. So I need a bunch of chromium. Do I have any of that? I have literally no chromium. <laughs> oh boy. This is gonna take a lot of that fuel blend. Cause I need one I need one heating element per each thing I'm converting over. Ooh, yeah. But look at all these things I have. Lots of things I've never even seen before. Uh tungsten, I don't think. Platinum, mm, I think I've seen that a little bit, rarely. Arsenic? Or is it ink dust? Don't breathe it in. Cadmium. I think a lot of this stuff is useless, but a lot of it is definitely useful. Like, apparently that's used in an alchemy table from Blood Magic. Yeah, there's gonna be some really important things that come from this. There's so many of them that I'm not sure what off the top of my head, but... I absolutely need to do this to progress in a lot of ways. Well, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm gonna plug up all these holes and make this look at least a little bit neater. I'll probably do that off camera. Um, and then I might do a little bit of extra work with this stuff just to tidy some things up. Probably not much. Also might be off camera. And then I'll probably get into some new stuff.